In today's video, we're going over tips and tricks on the CoolPad Legacy. Thank you for joining us today, guys. So this is the first in a series of videos we're doing on the CoolPad Legacy. If you're not a subscriber already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the little bell for post notifications so you can find out every time we post new content. We're gonna keep you super informed on this phone and show you all the cool things you can do with it. Let's jump right in. So we've got some tips and tricks today and we're saving one really super special tip for the very end of the video. It's gonna be our last tip, so stay tuned all the way till the end. We don't want you to miss that. Let's jump right in. So the first thing you always wanna do when you get a smartphone is go to your settings, go to display, and you basically wanna advanced, you want to change your sleep time from 30 seconds to at least two minutes. And basically what this does is the screen will not go off so quickly when you're not touching the screen. Um, the phone is set out of the box at 30 seconds and you'll be surprised how fast that 30 seconds goes by and it can be really frustrating uh, to always have to keep touching your screen just so that uh, it doesn't go off. So we always sort of start with that. That's not even one of the tips, that's just kind of a gimme. All right, so our next little tip is gonna be a cool way to jump between your apps to help increase your multitasking. So let's say I am in a text message and I'm having a conversation and at the same time, I'm also on Google and I'm, you know, looking through articles, right? So just by using your recent apps button right here, by hitting it twice, it'll always take you back to the last app you were using. So I can quickly toggle through my text messages and browsing through the web. Maybe you're even trying to look up something specific to share with someone in the text message. And so you could jump through. Oh, hey, da, 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 let me check. Jump back and you can go through and with your web browsing so um, that's called quick app switching and it's just done again through this little square which is your recent apps button so that's a little cool little trick that I love to use it just makes um, using the phone you know a little bit quicker it's something that a lot of Android phones do but we found that everyone doesn't know it that's what we share our next little tip is going to be a shortcut to take a screenshot with one hand and basically um, what you're going to do is find what you want to screenshot. So let's say I want to screenshot this page in the App Store. All I'm going to do is hold down for one second the power button. And this menu will pop up and I'm going to tap the third button, which is the screenshot button. It'll screenshot. I can then tap share or edit. It'll then take me to a list of options where I can um, add a filter to it. I can auto correct it. I can even um, do some manual controls. I can crop it as well. And when you're done, you just go ahead and hit done and save a copy. So really easy to screenshot now. And this was sort of an update that came with Android 9 Pie. You used to have to like hold down two buttons and it was a little frustrating. Now you just hold down that power button and tap screenshot and it's just that easy. Our next little tip is gonna be very similar to the last one, except instead of holding the power button, you're gonna hold either the volume up or volume down button, and it's gonna bring up uh, this little bell that you can tap to put the phone on vibrate or put it on silent. So I like this because uh, basically they've moved it from the notification panel, so you don't control that up here anymore. Now you just, again, hold volume up or volume down, and quickly you can take that phone and put it on silent or vibrate as you're walking into that meeting or whatever that important thing is where you don't want your phone to go off. So really cool little tip there and I love that. Again, a new uh, update from Android 9. All right, our next little tip is going to be uh, a cool way to customize the keyboard and really just make it um, unique to you. So I'm just gonna tap in this little section just to bring up the keyboard. And as you can see, the keyboard is just very bland. It's just a straight white keyboard. There's no, there's no lines between the keys. Um, it's just, this is the stock keyboard. So I wanna show you how to customize it and some of the things that you can do. So we're gonna click on the settings wheel up here and we're gonna go to theme. And here is where you can make your first customization. So click on show more and you'll get a full list of all the different keyboards that are available. 
Um, what pops out at me right now is this one right here. So I can do this and I can turn on key borders as well. So now it's actually going to show me individual keys versus one long keyboard. So I could hit apply and have that keyboard. But you can also scroll down here and actually choose a landscape as well. And you can have a picture as the background instead of just a solid color. So um, totally up to you. You can also choose one of these light gradient options here or a dark gradient. You've got a few different themes to choose from. And each one is going to change the color of the, the text as well. Now, aside from that, you have some other cool things. Um, so you can, oh, this comes turned on already, which is the swipe keyboard. Um, let's see, there was one more tweak. Let me see, go to advanced. So you can show the app icon as well. So it says display app application icon in the launcher. So there's that. But there's one more I'm looking for. I think it's in the preferences. Here it is. So you can turn on the number row and have an extra row of numbers that always show. And you can always have the emoji key show up on the keyboard as well. For those of you that love to use emojis, which is probably almost everybody, uh, it's just much easier to have the emoji key always showing versus having to tap a button for it to come up first. And then I like to turn on sound on key press so I can hear it every time I press a key. I feel like it helps me to type just a little more accurate. And now here's our new keyboard. So we have our emoji key there. We have our extra row of numbers right here. And um, it does make a little noise when you tap the keyboard as well. So that's just a little tip there, how to customize the phone and kind of make it more unique to you. Obviously I chose a pretty bland gray for the keyboard, but feel free to choose whatever your favorite color is to just make it stand out. All right. Our next little tip is going to be adjusting the text size and the reason why this is important is because this is a really large phone which is great but what tends to happen with large phones is that they make everything really large on the screen and sometimes it's a little too large where it makes the phone look weird just in my opinion so I always like to make this little tweak go to the settings go to display and then advanced and go down to display size and you can see the size of everything here and I can move this over to the left and it shrinks things down to more of a normal size now disclaimer if you don't see very well um, you may not want to make this tweak but um, for me I just like things to be a little bit smaller because I feel like you can actually get more on the screen you can kind of take advantage of all this extra screen real estate. So that's why I like to make this tweak. But if your uh, vision is not the best, you may not want to make this tweak. Just disclaimer. Um, so there is that. And now you can see now we have all the options on one screen and all the text is a little bit smaller. And we can again go to font here as well. So you can actually lower the display, but you can still make your font a little bit larger to kind of offset as well but I normally like to do small font and small for the default as well so anyway that was um, that was kind of the um, what I was going for so all the text is a little bit smaller the spacing is a little bit smaller you can even see on the setting screen here you can see more of the options at one time because everything is sort of shrunk down so to each their own if you like it you know keep it if not you can always change it back all right, our next little tip is going to be something that's going to help you to manage your storage, especially if you use a lot of social media or take a lot of pictures. Um, this setting on the phone is going to help to um, basically make sure that it's filtering through any temporary files so that you're not having a lot of clutter and losing your own personal storage. So we're going to go to settings. We're going to go to storage. And then we're going to go to storage manager and we're going to just turn this on and it says your storage is now being managed by the storage manager. Now what this is going to do is it's just going to keep track and I'll show you right here in this section to help free up storage space storage manager removes backed up photos and videos from your device. So for example, if you're using Google photos, which will automatically back up uh, pictures and videos, 
it will basically take anything that's backed up and it'll take it off of the phone. So um, again, you'll free up space that you can use for other things like apps and app data and um, other type of files. So it's very useful. I recommend it. Definitely say you turn it on. Right, here's the next thing. So this phone does not come with a gallery app, which is frustrating. I'm not, I, I like Google Photos, which basically Google Photos is the gallery app for all your pictures. Um, I like Google Photos for the backup capability, but I don't like it as a gallery app because I'm just not a big fan of it. I don't like, I don't like the layout and uh, it's not the easiest app to use in my opinion. So I always like to download this app Go to the Play Store, and you're gonna type in gallery, no ads. So look for this one. It has a picture of a yellow flower and a blue background, but when you download it, it's gonna look like this. So FYI. So tap on that. This is an awesome gallery app. It's so simple, and there's no ads. So you can just look through your pictures and just have a very seamless experience without a lot of crap all like there's like 50 different gallery apps on the app store and like they all have ads and it's extremely frustrating so just know that um if i'm recommending this it's something that you'll want to download and it's going to make your user experience on the phone a lot better so that should be your gallery app i'm going to go ahead and move this remove it put that down there done deal now one tweak i will also this is the next one so Google Photos, here's why you should use it. You're gonna actually use both apps together. So you're gonna just open Google Photos and you're gonna turn on backup and sync and confirm. And all this is gonna do is just backup every picture that you put on the phone to your Google account. So if you ever lose the phone, all you have to do is sign into a new phone, open Google Photos, so yeah, sign into that Gmail on a new phone, open Google Photos, and then open the app and you'll see all your pictures from your old phones. So all these pictures I took on my previous phones and they're all here and they're all ready to go. So that's one of the reasons why this is a great app. The, the backup capability is awesome. I don't like the functionality of just using it for taking pictures, like for managing my pictures. That's why I'm telling you to download this. But for everything else, um, it's a great app. So hopefully that makes sense. You're gonna use this app for managing your pictures. You're gonna use Google Photos just for backing up all the pictures that come through your phone that you take. All right, so we have gotten to almost the end. The last thing I'm gonna go over, this is our bonus tip, is gonna be how to use split screen on the CoolPad Legacy, which I love and I use all the time. So the process has changed, and this, is, this has a newer version of Android, so um, it's not how you're used to doing it. So I'm going to show you right now. Here we go. So let's say you want to watch something on YouTube. And it would only be fitting to watch one of my videos, right? So we'll tap here. Oh, or we'll go to my new site, Tech Made Easy. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe. A lot of awesome videos are on this channel as well. So I'm going to tap on this video. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to go home and then I'm going to open up Google Chrome. Because let's say I'm trying to watch a YouTube video and I also want to browse the web because I'm looking up something as well. So, open the first app, go home, open the second app, and now you're gonna go to recent apps, just like that. So, I'm gonna take, find the first app that you want to be at the top of the screen and you're gonna hold down on it and drag it to the top of the screen, like that. And then you're gonna find the app you want to be at the bottom, which is Google Chrome, tap there. And now I've got my split screen. I can turn this video on. Congratulations. Obviously lower the volume. And now I can have this video playing, skip the ad, and I can browse the web down here. So this is how you do split screen. It's super easy. You can also turn it sideways as well and you can have that video playing on the left while you're still navigating things on the right. So that is how you use split screen. You can drag this 
all the way across if you want to get out of a split screen, depending on what side you want to take over the screen. But that's how you get out of the split screen. All right, that's it guys. You made it to the end. You know the tips and tricks on the Cool Pad Legacy. I hope you guys found this helpful. Do us a favor, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what tips in this video were new that you didn't know. Um, we always love to hear uh, your feedback as well. Hit that like button for us. We definitely appreciate that. That obviously helps us grow and helps us spread the word about the video. We get more likes, so do that. Hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't already done so. And subscribe to our new site. On the next screen, you'll see a green circle. If you click on that circle, it'll give you a link to subscribe to our new channel, Tech Made Easy. We have other tech videos on there on different types of tech products like smartwatches and, and other more beginner type videos. So we appreciate all your support. Thanks again for watching. Take care and have a good one.